Hey, in this bonus lecture, you're going to learn how to create a fully responsive navbar, which adapts itself to various screen sizes using a bunch of the concepts you've learned so far, including flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis, flex wrap, and the order property. So here is our navbar. It has four items, and it's only the search item, which is flexing. As you can see, it grows and shrinks with the size of the container. And that's because we've given the search item a flex value of one, while the others are only as wide as the content inside of them force them to be. I've also added a bit different styling to this example. As you can see, we're only using one background color as that looks a little bit nicer. And the reason we used different background colors in previous examples was because it was a bit more pedagogical. However, by now you should know the basics of how Flexbox works, so we don't need different colors. In the HTML, you'll also see a few changes. As the container, we're using an unordered list and list items as the flex items, as this is a little bit more semantically correct for creating a navbar. The search item can be found here. And as you can see, I've added an input field so that you can actually write inside this search field. So nothing happens if you try searching for anything. Now, this navbar works well on wide screens and it works well to right about here where it starts breaking because the search suddenly can't fit anymore. So what we wanna do here is actually allow the container to wrap and to place two items instead of four on each of the two rows. So let's do that. We'll head over to the index.css and we'll simply create a media query. Set it to 600 pixels. And inside of it, target the container and allow it to wrap because right now it won't wrap. Regardless of how narrow you make it, it simply will not allow you to add items on multiple rows. It'll only allow one row. To change that, we'll do flex wrap and set it to wrap. As you can see, now it'll allow wrapping. Here, the logout wrap down to the second row. So this doesn't look very nice. Let's go back here and we'll target the items that and set their flex value to flex grow one, flex shrink one, however, flex basis 50% because that'll make each row fit two items like that. And as you can see, we have home and profile in the first row and search and log out on the second row, each taking up 50% of the total width. Now I actually want to align the search placeholder text in the center instead of at the left hand side. So I'll do search input and do align. So that looks a bit better. This has nothing to do with the flex box itself. It's just a design choice. Okay, so now we have two different states, this one and this one, and it's actually pretty nice. However, if the screen becomes even narrower, look what'll happen. It'll actually break at this point, pushing the search and the logout onto a row each. However, home and profile can still fit on one row, so Flexbox will allow them to stay on the same row. When it reaches this point, each item's a single row each. So I don't want this middle stage here. This one, the vertical layout, is good for very narrow screens, mobile phones, for example. And this one is good for a bit wider screens, but this layout isn't really that useful. So let's rather control this by creating another media query. This time, simply copy it from here and we'll add it at 400, for example. And what we need to do now is at this point, target each of the items like we're doing here. However, instead of giving each item 50% of the row in the width, we'll give them 100%. So I'll just copy this actually and change this to 100%. And as you can see, now the breakpoint at 400 pixels to reach here gives us a clean transition from this state to this state. Now, finally, what I want to do is move the search all the way to the bottom because I think it makes sense to have the search at the bottom when the layout is fully vertical. To do that, we'll target the search and simply give it an order of one and it jumped down to the bottom. 
And remember, that's because by default, order is set to zero for all these items. And whatever item which has an order above the others, for example, this one has one which is above zero, will appear after the others. So that was it. I hope you learned something. Feel free to play around with this and change it however you want. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the Q&A section. Thank you.